Welcome to Fame Church. We are coming to you live from our sanctuary located at 4537 APN Way in El Sobrante, California, where Pastor A. Keith and Lady Renee Williams serve as our lead ministry team. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. At Fame Happenings for the week of April the 14th, we thank and we praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for a new day and new opportunity to give God thanks. This Sunday, we come to celebrate the keeping and providing power of our God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We stand as witnesses that God through Jesus Christ has kept us and preserved our lives. To God be the glory. We are excited to welcome you today for a great worship experience. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah 53 and 5. The 79th Church Anniversary. We will hold our 79th Church Anniversary on April the 28th at 3 o'clock p.m. Pastor Williams is asking that the Committee for the Church Anniversary will meet him this Tuesday, April the 16th at 6 o'clock p.m. on FAME's conference line. CCWMS 2024 Coronation. The California Conference Women's Missionary Society will hold its annual Queen's Coronation. The theme for the Queen's Coronation is African Queens, celebrating the past, embracing the future. Our WMS at Fame has selected Sister Chase Williams as our contestant for the coronation. We are looking forward to rallying behind Chase as our representative at Fame. The Queen's Coronation will be held on Saturday, June the 1st at the Radisson Hotel in Oakland. Information will be shared as to how we can support. A church call to prayer and fasting. Attention members of Fame Church. Pastor Williams has announced a season of prayer and fasting starting immediately and continuing until May the 10th. This fast will take place on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. During this time, participants will engage in a complete fast, consuming only liquids with water and light juices as acceptable options. Additionally, the church will gather for prayer sessions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 a.m. We encourage all available members to join in and commit this time to seek the Lord. Word on Wednesday. We will be studying God's Word this Wednesday with Word on Wednesday. How is your prayer life? We are studying prayer. You don't want to miss this series. Join us this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock p.m. as we study the Word of God. The dial-in number is 510-904-4285 or visit us online. Ask what you can do to help move fame forward. Each one of us as members of fame is challenged to ask, what can I do to help move fame forward? You may feel that you don't have much to offer, but little becomes much when we place it in the master's hand. Contact Pastor Williams this week to see where you can help. Fame April Birthdays. Michael Hendrick Sr., April the 3rd. Donna Stream, April the 15th. And Ariel Bell, April the 16th. Remembering in prayer. Please call each of these people by name 
as you pray this week. A special prayer is requested for Sister Joyce Calloway and her family in the passing of her mother, Esther Todd. The homegoing celebration will be at 11 o'clock a.m. on April the 15th at Bethel AME Church in San Francisco. Special prayer is requested for Sisters Henrietta Hartwell and Mitty Joyce Colbert in the passing of their sister, Patricia Lee. The homegoing services was held on yesterday, April the 13th. Bishop and Mrs. Clement W. Few and family, Elder and Mrs. Harold R. Mayberry and family, Pastor and Mrs. A. Keith Williams Sr. and family, Sharon Bolton, Francina Hodge, Donna Stream, Bill and Diane Gray, Martha Mason, Beatrice Smith, Elizabeth Sissy Warren, Joyce Thomas, Henry Jordan, Shayana Lane, Phyllis Yvette Redmond, Johnny Charles Stevens, Robin and Nicole Williams and family, Margie Turner, DeAndre Long, Cameron Phipps, Karen Marshall, Stephanie Westbrooks, Reverend QB Finley and family, Jesse Henry, Yomo Gumby, George Jackson, our fame, youth, and young adults, and our country leadership. These have been your announcements for the week. Have a blessed week. And we will now enter into our live worship experience. to always provide for us. Come on, give God the praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. We want to say and tell you that you're welcome to this worship experience today. We're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord. But most important, we want to welcome the Lord into our worship experience. That's why we say, Lord, you're welcome. So begin to talk to him. Tell him, Lord, you're welcome. 
all over the house. Tell them, Lord, come on in this place. Have your way, God. From the front of the house to the back of the house, God, have your way. Lord, we need your power. We need your anointing. Even now, stand all over the house as we recite together our worship prayer. And it says, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. That's what we want him to do is to overcome us with his presence, with his power, and his anointing on today. Hallelujah. Our call to worship declares, I was glad when they sent unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I've loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. All together, O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praise. And that's what we came to do is to sing God's praise today. Come on, say amen as our praise ensemble lead us further in our worship experience. Praise the Lord, fame. Good morning, good morning. You can join in with us as we just give God glory today. Because we know that he is good. He is good. And he is good. So if you don't mind, put your hands together. Sing with us. Whatever you do. Just help us lift up the name of Jesus.
there any witnesses in the house that know that Jesus will? Come on, why don't you just why don't you just share that with your neighbor? Jesus will. Whatever you're going through, whatever you need from him, Jesus will. Whatever the problem, God can already solve them. Jesus will. Come on, declare that right where you are, even online, Jesus will. I'm not worried about it because Jesus will. He promised to supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. So Jesus will. Whatever the issue is, the problem, the sickness, he's a healer. He's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Ropa, a healer. He is everything that we need. for us to sing that because what we need to understand is the same God that has done it before 
he can do it right now so whatever the prayer petition is remember that he's done it before and he can do it again and if it had not been for him on our side we don't know where we'd be but we're glad that he was there most gracious and loving God we come before you God as creator you are the creator of the world that stepped out on nothing and created everything Lord it was you that decided to give us grace and mercy by waking us up this morning and starting us on our way truly God we really don't deserve all that you do for us we don't deserve all the doors that you've opened on our behalf but God we come standing here today because we're grateful and we declare God if it had not been for you on our side we don't know where we'd be if you wasn't the one that was protecting us from all of our enemies if it wasn't for you God that met us even when we were in our hospital rooms sick Lord if it had not been for you God that was with us on our jobs we would have lost that job Lord because folks was trying us but you were there God if it had not been for you we would be outdoors but Lord you provided a roof over our head so God we come now to say thank you for always providing that that we need and then God we come today just praying for those who are on our prayer list Lord God you said the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much so God we come calling on you right now in the name of Jesus Lord God first we pray that you would touch the bereaved families touch sister Joyce God today as she gets ready to lay to rest her mother on tomorrow comfort and keep her strengthen her right now God then God we pray for sister Henrietta and for sister Minnie God that you would just continue to comfort and keep them after just laying to rest their sister God we know that you are a company keeper and you are a comforter in the time of loss so God we thank you God for keeping them right now but then God we come in with a special prayer lifting up to you my nephew and brother George Jackson God in the name of Jesus Lord God you are a healer you are a way maker so I pray God in the name of Jesus that whatever is acting out of place in his body from the top of his head to the sole of his feet be healed right now in the name of Jesus and then Lord as he gets ready to go in for the procedure we pray oh God in the name of Jesus that you will guide the surgeon's hands because Lord you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think do it now and then God we call upon you for sister Sharon Bolton God in the name of Jesus I pray God that you would touch her body in the name of Jesus Lord God I pray that you would have mercy upon her Lord God that's one of your best servants have mercy upon her God we know that you're able to do whatever you want to do so Lord we're not worried about what the doctors may say we're not worried about how they say it may look we only believe the report of the Lord and God right now we claim total healing in the name of Jesus Lord we claim total deliverance right now in the name of Jesus and then God 
for all of those that are on our prayer list you know what they stand in need of so Lord we pray that you'll just touch in the name of Jesus strengthen in the name of Jesus deliver in the name of Jesus comfort in the name of Jesus and then God will give you the praise because we know it's already done we praise you in advance for the healing that's already done for the way making that's already done for the keeping that's already done we lift up our hands we say hallelujah glory to your name thank you God somebody say thank you God thank you God that is already done it's already done it's already done in Jesus name amen and praise God hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, we bless your name, God. Hallelujah, we bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Already done. I want to just share with you all that that praise is always in order. Praise always have to precede deliverance. Praise have to dis- per- precede healing. You got to praise your way through. There's some things that you're going through. And the only way to get through it is to praise your way through it. And just thank God that it's already done. Claim it. Look at it. You see the problem. Talk to your problem. Talk to your storm and say it's already done in the name of Jesus. It's already moved. The healing's already there. The deliverance is already there. The comfort is already there in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise today. I'm glad that y'all are in the worship experience today. Amen. We thank God for all of you all that are here. Amen. I see a visitor in the house. We're so glad that you are with us this morning. Amen. And then my little friend there that always talks to me when I'm preaching. Amen. We're glad that she's here in the house today. Amen. You're welcome. Come back again. Don't be a stranger. All right, we want to see more of you. Amen. Right now, let's hear the special announcement today from the church anniversary. As we eagerly approach our 79th church anniversary, our hearts are filled with excitement and gratitude for the journey that has brought us to this significant milestone. On Sunday, April the 28th, 2024, at 3 o'clock p.m., we will come together to celebrate this momentous occasion in the life of our congregation. We extend a heartfelt invitation to all of our current and former members to join us for what promises to be a memorable and joyous celebration. Whether you have been a part of our church family for decades or have recently connected with us, you are warmly welcomed with open arms. There are numerous ways to participate in our anniversary festivities. Former members are invited to join our homecoming mass choir, 
lending their voices to the beautiful music that will uplift and inspire us during the service. Additionally, if you served as an usher or in any other capacity within the church, we encourage you to come and represent your area of ministry. Our anniversary celebration will take place outdoors in our parking lot, where we will gather under a tent for worship and fellowship. Prior to the service, a delicious dinner will be served from 1 o'clock p.m. until 2 o'clock p.m., 2.30 p.m., providing an opportunity for us to share a meal together and reminisce about cherished memories. In addition to the worship service, we have planned several other activities to commemorate our 79th anniversary. On Saturday, April the 20th, we invite you to join us for a family and friends afternoon of bowling at the AMF Pinot Valley Lanes at 2 o'clock p.m. Then, on Sunday, April the 21st at 10 o'clock a.m., we will welcome Rev. J. Eggert Boyd, the recently retired pastor of Fame Los Angeles, as our pre-anniversary preacher. As we prepare for this special occasion, we invite those who are able to consider giving a 79th celebration offering of $150 as a tangible expression of gratitude to God for his faithfulness and provision throughout the years. Join us as we reflect on God's blessings and celebrate the journey that has brought us to this momentous occasion. We look forward to rejoicing with you in love and fellowship of our church family. Come on, give God praise for those, that announcement. Amen. Amen. Have you all started contacting some old members and some old people that are part of our congregation? Amen. We want to have, we want to pack out the church. Amen. Well, the parking lot. Amen. And we want to have a good time. Amen. For the rest of the week, this rain is going to blow through and we're going to get some good weather. Amen. And at the end of the month, it's going to be some great weather. Amen. Amen. But if we have to come inside, hey, we're going to do it. And we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Amen. I want everybody to plan to meet us this Saturday at um, the Pinole Valley Lanes. Amen. Didn't y'all have a good time last year as we was bowling? Amen. We're going to have a good time bowling. Amen. Talking a whole bunch of stuff. I get to talk trash for a whole year. I did good. I did good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Y'all meet us there. We're going we gonna to do all that we want to do, all that we can do to lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm, I have some, um, some mailers that are coming, and we're going to mail some things out to some folks in the neighborhood. Um, there may be a day during, not this week, but next week that we go out and just stick a little flyer on people's doors. They come celebrate our 79th church anniversary with us. Amen on next next week. Amen. So I'm inviting all of you all. Get excited. I'm excited already. All of y'all singers, all y'all singers that was in the choir. Amen. I want y'all singing on the church anniversary. Amen. We're going to um, rehearse the Thursday, the Thursday night before the church anniversary, which is um, like the 25th. No, no, it's the 24th, 23rd or 24th. Amen. So y'all meet us, plan to meet us here at about, what time you guys rehearse? Seven? Okay. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get y'all. Huh? Yeah, y'all come in at seven and, and, and then I'll get y'all started and if he has to run back in, he'll run back in, amen. God bless. God bless. Amen. Sign up today. Let us know today, if you can, um, about bowling Saturday so that we will kind of have an idea of who's going to go. Amen. Um, Sister Ina, if you can get a blank piece of paper that people can just let you know who's going to go with us. Amen. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, um, well, actually from Thursday through yesterday, we were in the district conference of our um, new district, which is now Bay Valley District. 
amen, since we only have one presiding elder. And I tell you that the Lord was with us each day. Amen. We had a blessed service each day all the way through from the start, even from the morning praise and worship. Just getting before we started talking business, the praise and worship lit up the house. It was just a good, good fellowship. And then we closed out really well on yesterday. So keep keep your eyes open for those things that we do. Remember, we are a connectional church. We are a connectional church. Um, one of the things that Elder asked for us to do, and we wanted to be compliant with it, is um, the general conference is coming up in um, August of this year. Amen. The general conference is coming up. Y'all, y'all familiar with the general conference of the AME Church? Y'all AME. Y'all been AME all your life. Y'all know y'all know about the general conference. <laughs> anyway, he. But but there is um, there is a district over in Africa, the 18th district. The 18th district, which is being led by um, Bishop Francine Brookins. You all remember Sister Francine Brookins. She's out of the California conference. Amen. And um, so she's the leader of that particular district. And they have delegates that they have to bring over. Well, what the, what the general conference is going to give them to help with the delegates is not enough. So what our elder is asking for us to do is to help undergird the amount that she was going to have to pull out of her own pocket. So if y'all want to know how much she was going to have to bring, she was going to have to bring $37,000 out of her own pocket. So our elder wants to help undergird that expense as much as we can, as much as we can. Amen. So if you um, are of the mindset if you can give a special offering at the end of the service, um, we're going to take up a special offering. You can still use the electronic ways or whatever, but just say special offering, and we're going to get that over to the elder to help with um, what's going on. One of the things that I've, I've found <clears throat> is that um, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Yes. Amen. And I've given in times when I didn't really have to give. You hear me? And watched how God opened up a window where somebody just blessed me with something. You hear me? That's how God does. And when we're just cheerful about it and when we help somebody else, that's really what the church is all about. You know, not only do we give God the praise, not only do we worship him and all that and learn more about him, but it's also about what can we do to help our neighbor? Because the word, that was even one of the commandments says, love thy neighbor as thyself. There's some stuff that you don't want to go without, right? So we need to be able to help our neighbors when our neighbors are going through some stuff as well. Amen. So give God the praise. It's time for us to give back to God a portion of all that he has blessed us with, our tithe and our offerings. Amen. The ways to give are on the screen. Give the five cash app, Zelle. Or even in person, you can give, um, Sister Stephanie will give you an envelope if you didn't already grab one on your way into the service. Amen. But I want, um, I want us, those of you all that still give physically, to continue to, when you come into the service, just grab an envelope and give right away or drop it right in the box right away. Amen. Because that's the way that we really show that God that we're just eager to give to him. Amen. We're just so eager to give to him. And I always make sure that before our service starts, that my money is already in the cash app that I've given for this week's tithe. Amen. So whatever your means is, let's let's go ahead and do that right now. Givelify, cash app, Zelle, or to Stephanie, I think she needs an envelope. Amen. Just want to pray. Forever and ever and ever for all done for me. Stand up all over the house while we do our stewardship celebration saying, when we give back to God, we're repaying that debt that we owe God. We're not giving him a gift, we're paying a debt. 
God gives us the ability to gain wealth and increase. Of that, he requires the tithe off the top. When we give back to God, a portion of all that he has blessed us with reflects directly on our relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise and Samuel. Lead us in, in our worship. Amen.
Praise Ensemble a hand. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah is the highest praise. And we offer that to God freely. Lord, we thank you for your word today. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word. Bless God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, that you would meet us now as we share your word today take me out of self use me for your glory god get open up hearts and minds right now to receive a word from you this i ask now in jesus name amen and praise god if you look with me in the book of acts chapter 3 I'm going to read first verse through verse 7 or 8. 8. Stand all over the house with me real fast as we see, read King James Version. And it says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which was called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him and John, and they both said, and he said, look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping stood up and walked and entered into the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God all the people saw him and praising God you may take your seat and we're going to talk just for a little while very short moment on getting more than you ask for. Somebody say getting more than you ask for. Getting more than you asked for. This is um, probably one of the familiar um, writings within the word of God and it's familiar because, you know, because of the, the, the saying, silver and gold, have I none, such as I have, give I thee. And, you know, Kirk Franklin wrote the song, silver and gold, silver and gold, and I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. When we look at this particular story in the Bible, it's really taking us to a place of remembering first 
that what the disciples here, Peter and John, are getting ready to do. And that is they're getting ready to go to the temple to pray. Now, you know that because Jesus just recently um, was crucified and buried. And what they're finding because of the fact that they were he's recently crucified and buried, they're still part of those Jewish, of the Jewish faith that were still following after the traditions of the, that they were originally led with. You remember they were supposed to sacrifice. They were supposed to offer different type of um, sacrifices for sins and things of that nature. Well, some of them continued in that vein until they had completely been converted. But those that were of the Jewish faith that had been converted still found themselves running up to the temple, not necessarily to sacrifice, but to pray. Amen. And what we see here in this particular story here is that it's highlighted for us because not only was this the time for them to go up and pray, but this was also the time that they were offering a sacrifice to God as well during that same period of time. But this was the most popular hour to pray. The first thing that we see with this um, beggar, first thing that we see here is that he was just carried to the temple gates right before the time of prayer. And I don't know about you all, if you've ever um, encountered um, some homeless people or those that were asking for help from someone, they always knew the right spot to go to. They always knew the right time to go to that spot. Do I have a witness here? Because you can't, I mean, they could spend all day in one spot and not get as much as they would if they went the right time. You know, so a lot of times when you're going home from work, the commute hours, you see them right there because they that's the the optimal time for them to get the best donations that they can get at that moment because of the traffic or even downtown and you see them when folks get off of work, they're right there asking for some assistance because it's the right time. One thing that this beggar knew, he didn't say that he was at the temple gate all day. It says that he got to the temple gate right before the hour of prayer. And he was laid there daily. One other thing that we know about him is that the word tells us that he was lame from birth. So everywhere that he went, someone had to carry him or to help him to get wherever he was going because he was lame from birth. All right. And the other thing that we know about him is that he was over 40 years in age. So can you imagine being over 40 years in age, being laid at the temple every day to ask people alms, right? And it says because of the fact that he had been there so long that everybody knew him. Amen? You know, when you're going by and you see him and everybody's going up to the temple at the hour of prayer and the hour of prayer in our text says the ninth hour, which is translated to be the, at 3 p.m. in the day. So it was the heat of the day or the, or the mid time of the day. He went there for to ask alms. But another interesting thing that you'll know about this lame person is he's over 40 years old, right? He has to be carried everywhere he goes, right? But the other thing that you need to know about this lame person is he has never been inside of the temple. He has never been inside of the temple. And the fact of the matter is not because he didn't want to go 
inside of the temple, but he was not allowed. The book of Leviticus chapter 21 says that any person that has a blemish or a defect or malformity could not enter into the temple. Isn't that something? That is something because it, it, it means that they could not go in to pray. They could not go in to offer sacrifices only because at that particular time they were seen as a blemish. They were seen as not worthy. And you know when they were offering the sacrifices, they wouldn't allow them to offer sacrifices with any blemishes or any type of malformity. They had to offer a perfected sacrifice before the Lord. Amen. It wasn't until Jesus' day that, that when they were in the temple selling that they were selling blemished sacrifices to the people that came from afar to try to go in to offer those sacrifices. But it was not only the animals, but it was also people. People that were blind couldn't go in. People with a withered hand couldn't go in. People that were lame and could not walk couldn't go in. Why do you believe or why do you think it was that when Jesus walked the, the streets during his 33 years on the earth, but his three years of ministry, why he went everywhere he went and they brought sick folk to him? While they bought those that were lame, while those that were, were, were halted and anything that was going on with them, they brought them to them because by him healing the sick, by him healing their infirmity, whatever it was, means that, that they're not only going to start a new life of being able to be healed, but they're also starting out on a brand new spiritual journey. Do I have a witness here? What this healing meant for this um, beggar at the, at the temple gate meant one thing. It meant that, first of all, he said, can you give me alms? And guess what? One thing, that other thing that we need to know, maybe before I get to the other point here, the other thing that we need to know is that beggars or those that ask for alms always know how to discern who will help them and who will not. Do I have a witness? They can look at the crowd and say, oh, they may help me. And when they saw Peter and John getting ready to go up to the temple gate, it says that they, 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 they picked, that he picked them out of the crowd. Because this was the time of going up to the gate for offering, sac offering prayer and everybody was coming, but he picked them out of the crowd. He stopped them specifically. I don't know if you, have you ever watched um, uh, when you're helping somebody or, or, or how when you go up and someone is asking you for help, that while you are getting ready to receive it, they're still scanning yeah. the rest of the crowd because they need to see who's going to be the next person that I'm going to ask or that's going to possibly offer me some assistance. He scanned the crowd. He saw Peter and John getting ready to go up, up there, and he stopped them specifically, and he said, can you give me some alms? He asked them, can you help me? Can you give me something? He, he was actually, they called him, they said he was a beggar. Beggars, not only um, they, they, they will continue to ask you, but they also plead. They plead their case. They want you to help them. He was a beggar. He scanned them throughout the crowd, and he stopped them and asked them for arms. And Peter stopped and said, look at us. And he gave them a look. And at the point of him looking at Peter, he thought Peter was going to give him a better offering. <laughs> Do I have a witness? Here? You, want my, you want my full attention because he was scanning the crowd. But he said, look at us. And he said, silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, give I thee. 
Do I have a witness here? He's telling him, I don't have the money that you're looking for. But I got something better than what you're looking for. Do I have a witness here? And you know, one of the things that we are uh, 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 part of, part of even in prayer, and the word tells us that we have bec not because we ask not. And many a times we're asking for the wrong thing. Do I have a witness here? Sometimes we're asking for $20, but we really need a place to stay. We need our food to eat. We really need somebody to open up a bigger and a better blessing for us. So this man didn't know what he really wanted. He knew that he was brought to this temple all this time, every day for 40 years begging at the temple. He knew that he needed some arms because I'm sure that he still had expenses that he had to take care of. Do I have a witness? He had to give a little something to the people that carried him, him there every day. Do I have a witness here? But not only that, but he said he got something more than what he asked for when he stopped Peter and John. And I don't know about you today, but sometimes we got to be able to be discerning enough to see who it is that really offers me the best support. You can't go to everybody for help because everybody is not in the posture of helping you because you'll find that while you're standing in need of help and asking them to pray for you, they will P-R-E-Y, they will pray on you. They'll put all your business in the street. Do you know that such and such came and asked me for help? Do I have a witness here? That's why Jesus told them in Matthew 6, he says that the God that sees in secret will reward you openly. Meaning, don't tell everybody what you're doing or how you're doing, what you need for. And the God that sees in secret will reward you openly. But he told them, look on us. We, we don't have silver and gold. You can see because our clothes may be tattered. Our clothes, our shoes, our sandals may be worn. We've been walking with Jesus for three years. And hey, he, ain't, he didn't have a job. We didn't go out to earn no money. Our clothes and everything that we have is from then. He's saying, whatever it is, he says, silver and gold we don't have. But what we do have is in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And what you need to know about Peter and John is that they saw a need greater than what this man was asking for. And I don't know about you, sometimes folks will come to you for help, but they need something more than what they're asking for. And God will give us a discerning enough spirit to say, you asking for this, but this is what you need, so I'm going to give you this. Do I have a witness here? And guess what? When we are, are discerning and in tuned enough with God, God will tell us what the specific need is for someone and we'll be able to bless them with that need. And that's at the point of us giving to them like they saw. He says, we got, we got power that was left over from Jesus Christ. That he empowered us with. You know, if you go back to the, to the last chapter in the book of John, he says, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Jesus left them with some power. And that power was for them to use to continue the ministry forward. Because the reality is that not only were they going to heal this man, but they were also continuing the mission and the will of Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness here? I told y'all before that Jesus did not come for the well to do. He didn't come for those that did not need any help. He came to help those that were helpless. He came to help the least, the lost, and the left out because every now and then we got to step out of our comfort zone and do something for somebody else. 
and feel good about it. He said, don't go give your stuff to somebody that don't need your help. And that's where we that's where we go wrong as a people of God is we give more to people that don't need our help than we do to people that need our help. Do I have a witness that we we give to people that don't need it because we're trying to impress them? Do I have a witness? We're trying to gain favor with them. But no, God is saying you need to give your best stuff to somebody that need it. And not only that, but give it to somebody that won't that 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 may not be able to give it back to you. Because that's another thing that we do. We give to people because we know that they could do back for us. Do I have a witness here? But he's saying the, what we have, we don't have silver and gold. But what we have is in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And they took this man by the hand. And it says when they took him by the hand and lifted him up, that he regained all of his strength and was able to go walking and leaping into the temple with them. Now, I don't know about you, but that was that was a miracle on two fronts. First of all, because the Lord restored all of the strength in his legs, but also because he was able to walk. Do I have a witness? He didn't have to go through the stumbling and, and falling over as we had to go through as a child, pulling, pulling it up on this and trying to walk. But it says that not only did God strengthen him, but he leaped up. And I don't know about you, but when you get more than what you asked for, you don't need to just get up haphazardly, but you need to get up with a shout. You need to get up with enthusiasm and happiness about what God has done for you. This man was not at the temple to worship. He was not at the temple because of his faith. He was there because he needed some money. But soon as they restored his legs and he was able to get up, he went into the temple. And not only did he go into the temple, but he praised his way in. I don't know about you or who I'm talking to this morning, but guess what? Every time we enter into the house of God, we should come in with a praise. Do I have a witness? The word of God says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name because the Lord is and his mercy is and his truth endure to all generation. You need to be excited about God. You need to be excited about what the Lord has done for you. If he's ever done anything for you, when the Lord wakes you up and gives you enough strength to get you ready to go into the house of God, because that's more than you asked for. You need to get ready, get up with a shout. I don't know about you, but when I gotta get up in the morning, sometimes it's slow, but other times it's fast because I'm excited that I was on God's get up list. God decided to wake me up. God decided to deliver me even though I was not worthy because sometimes I forget to tell God thank you, but I'm so glad that God don't forget to wake me up good God from Zion so when I can get up and when I can go to the house of God I make sure that I'm not getting there right when the service starts but I get there in enough time that I'm going to meet him because I don't want to miss a thing when it's time to worship because when it's time to worship I want to give him my best praise when it's time to give him thanks. I want to thank him for waking me up. I want to thank him for keeping me. I want to thank him for starting me on my way. That's what this man did. When the when disciples lifted him up, he got up with a praise. Do I have a witness here? This was his first time ever entering to the temple of God 
and he went in with a shout I don't know about you but every time you get to go into a house of God maybe you've been there before maybe you've never been there before but you need to go in with a shout there was a time I saw a little um, a little reel on Facebook and folks thought they was being funny but every time somebody came to the door of the church there was somebody that met them and they just started dancing because they wanted them to enter with thanksgiving they wanted them to enter with praise and they came in and folks didn't look at them strange they looked at them they was dancing so they started dancing i don't know about you if the church is going to be excited you need to be like this beggar he didn't have much but the lord gave him more than he asked for when the lord has given you more than you've asked for i just ask god to supply my needs but then god turned around and gave me some of my wants too i'm excited about what the lord does and i'm excited that he'll give you more than you asked for you may have asked god give me a good job he gave you a great job you may ask god say give me one that i can take care of all of my bills and then god gave you a job that can take care of your bills and some of your wants too do i have a witness here that's just like the god that we serve the man got more than he asked for and he responded by leaping he responded by praising god and guess what when 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 when, when the it says that the people knew who he was because he had asked them for alms for 40 years it says that when he went in they said hey that's the one that was at the gate asking for alms and guess what some of the people wondered what happened and they said they were amazed at what happened but then there were some folks that was there that wanted to celebrate with him they wanted to praise with, with them because they wanted to know what happened and how did it happen. And he said, this is something. Peter and them had two more chapters after this chapter to defend what they did with this lame man. Do I have a witness here? But I don't know about you because when people see something good on other folks, the first thing that they do, rather than get excited for the person, they want to know how did it happen to them and that's a whole nother sermon for another day because but we need to get excited for folks when you see somebody else that's been blessed when the lord is opening up doors for them rather than talk about them and ask them how did it happen you need to go over there and get closer to them and say whatever happened to you i'm thankful to god that it happened to you let me rub a little bit on you because i want it to rub off on me that's how excited i get whenever folks are getting blessed i don't i don't have to hate on their blessings i get to praising god for their blessings because guess what that lets me know that god is in the neighborhood and he just may stop by my house next do i have a witness here so keep on giving god praise and keep on giving him thanks when he gives you more than what you asked for come on give god praise today more hallelujah jesus came and that's what his word tells us in matthew john 10 he said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. I'm so glad that because of that grace and that mercy that Jesus shared with all people, it means that everybody has a right to the tree of life. Amen. Everybody. 
It says, whatever you're going through, you have a right to the tree of life. There's a song that says, come ye disconsolate. Meaning whatever you got going on in your life. You may be sick, you may be withered, you may be blind, whatever it is, you have a right to the tree of life through Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus did. He restored us completely. Whatever our infirmity is, it's welcoming us. Right now, we're offering Jesus Christ to you. Whatever whatever it is, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we're offering him to you right now. And I'm so glad that he will come in and he will be with you. But if you've never invited him in your heart, you need to know he's not there. You have to actually say, Lord, come into my heart. Lord, I know that you are Jesus. Jesus, you're God's only begotten son. I know that you died for me. Come into my house and live with me. Be with me. That's what Revelation 3 and 20 is. He says, if you open the door, I'm going to come in and be with you. All you have to do is open up the door. Amen. If that's you and you're listening to me today and you've made an effort or the Lord is speaking to your heart and you want to accept Jesus today, message us on Facebook or YouTube or even call the number that's on your screen. We'd like to walk you through the plan of salvation. Whatever it is that you need, you need Jesus today, and he's available to you. Come on, give God a hand praise. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Oh, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Amen. Stand all over the house. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all Church here below. Praise Him above. He heavenly host. Praise Father. getting more than you asked for. Thank you, God, for giving us those things that we need. We thank you, God, that you always provide for us more than we ask. Lord, because you, through your Holy Spirit, pray on our behalf through moanings and groanings that we cannot even utter. So I thank you, God, that you always know what we need and that you always provide that that we need. Lord God, may we always, once we receive whatever blessing it is, be excited and praise you all the way through it. In the name of Jesus. Now, unto him. The one who's protected us and kept us safe. Now, unto him. The one who always go before us and prepares us for the unexpected. Now unto him. Woke us up early this morning. Now unto him. That can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. To the only wise God our Father. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and ever. And all the people of God say. Oh, 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 man, everybody sing, oh, man, everybody sing, oh.
we'll see you next week same time same station god bless you god keep you sign up for bowling